Hello and welcome to Tech Deals Benchmark Time 3D Mark, the 3D graphics benchmark. We're running this today on this Acer Aspire E15 laptop computer. I've previously reviewed this computer. This is awesome. Link in the video description below. Go check that out. In short, for $550, you will not find a better laptop on the market available today. Intel i5 processor, sixth generation, latest and greatest chip, very, very quick. 8 gigabytes of system RAM, 256 gigabytes solid state flash drive, super fast performance, fast boot, fast application load time, it's great. NVIDIA GeForce GTX 940MX dedicated graphics card and a 15.6 inch full HD 1080p screen. I love this machine. For $550, you can do no better than this. Now, 3D Mark is designed to test both the processor and the graphics chip. The first one we're going to run today is Time Spy. Now we're going to run several. I will trim the video while they're running because otherwise this would be a half hour long video and nobody wants to watch that. So I'll trim the actual part. I'll show the start and the stop and I'll show the results. I will also put the results in the video description below. So if you just want to know what the number was, well you don't have to watch this video. Just go look in the video description and there you'll find your answer. Let me go ahead and hit run. And we will trim this and be back with the results in just a minute. Okay, and we're back. I said we'd be with the results, but I want to insert a small section of the actual run of this because I want to talk about the relative performance of this machine and what to expect. What you see right now probably appears to be a very low frame rate, a very slow uh, update of the screen. It is. That is because this is a very entry-level graphics chip. For $550, you're not going to be getting super top-of-the-line graphics. However, this is the most demanding test they have. It's DirectX 12, they just released it. It's really meant for more powerful machines, so it's going to be slow. The later test we run, which I'll show a small snippet of, will be much faster. The point is that if you run the proper games on it at the right detail settings, you won't have a problem. You'll get great performance. I just want to show that. I'll trim this again. We'll be back in a second with the results. And we're back with the results. Time Spy got 289 points on this laptop computer. Is that a good score? Well, it's not a good score or a bad score, it's just a score. You have to compare that number relative to some other machine, either your computer or a different computer that you're considering. Higher score, better performance. Lower score, less performance relative to different machines. Let's go run a different benchmark. Let's run Firestrike. Firestrike is a very commonly run uh, test by many testers across many machines, easy to find results for. Let's hit run and be back again with the results in just a minute. And I'm just going to cut back in here really quick to show you a small snippet of the performance of this benchmark. As you can see, the frame rate is much faster than Time Spy was. It's still not playable in terms of gameplay, but again, this isn't a game, it's a test. We were running there between 12 to 17 frames per second, which is definitely improvement over Time Spy. Um, Fire Strike is an older test, so that's the reason for that. Now, um, we're going to do probably three more tests after this, and each one will get progressively faster. It just again provides you with a list of scores to compare against, against other machines. All right, now I'll trim again and we'll be back with the results. And we're back with the results. 2,046 is the total score in Firestrike. Needless to say, that number is much larger than Time Spy, but again, that doesn't mean anything. You cannot compare Firestrike and Time Spy numbers. If you want to compare Firestrike numbers between this machine and a different machine, no problem. Time Spy number uh, between this machine and a different machine, no problem. But don't compare Time Spy on this and Firestrike on another, or Firestrike on this and Time Spy. They're not comparable. Let's do another one. Benchmarks, Skydiver, I quite like this one. We'll be back in a minute with the results. All right, I just want to cut back in here and show you the amazing performance of this benchmark. This is actually the combined test, the last section of this benchmark, and we're over 30 frames per second, which for an entry-level graphics chip like this is actually really good. There's a lot going on. There's fire, there's physics with the swinging drums on the top, there's a character moving around, there's lighting effects. Very, very impressive, and it just goes to show that when you're running something that is within the capabilities of your chip, your performance is great. And look at that, we have our score, 6,902 points. Excellent, excellent result. 
Now we are going to come up here to benchmarks and we're going to come down to CloudGate. Now we're starting to get into tests which are older and frankly anything will run these days. This will run on integrated graphics. But this lets you see the performance difference between integrated graphics and a dedicated graphics card. Let me hit run and we'll be back in just a minute. Just to cut back in here to show you the performance, we're running CloudGate. We are at 45 frames per second, and it's absolutely gorgeous. If this were a game, that would be smooth and playable. So as we've moved down the list of benchmarks, as we've moved further into the past, the performance has improved because while the graphics chip in here may not play every single latest and greatest game, I fully expect, for example, The Witcher 3, to not really be playable on this machine. You need to step up in graphics to do that. This will play uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 perfectly. Uh, I suspect it will play Black Ops 3 at minimum detail levels. That's absolutely gorgeous. So you have to make some compromises. This will not play every game on the market. But if you temper your expectations, it'll do a lot. And for $550, that's a very good deal. Now, if you have $1,000 to spend, there's several excellent laptops with double the graphics performance of this that you can certainly go buy that have an Intel i7 CPU, that have a faster graphics chip. But at the $550 price point, you cannot beat this. All right, I'll trim this again, and we'll be back with the final results. And we're back. 7,642 points is what CloudGate got on this machine. Let's come down to benchmarks and run Ice Storm Extreme, and I'll hit run. I have to admit that when I first got 3D Mark a number of years ago, and I ran Ice Storm on, I think it was a 5000 series AMD HD card, actually back when it was ATI before AMD even bought them, I thought that they were doing benchmarks of games that were coming out. I didn't know, what can I say? It was new at the time. And I saw this and thought, oh my God, that is cool. And so I searched, what can I say? I searched trying to see what game is this and when is this coming out? Because that looks like a ton of fun. Somebody make a game like that because that's amazing. And even though that's an older benchmark and we're running at 200 frames per second, holy smokes. It's gorgeous. Yes, I know the details and the polygon counts and the textures are lower, but that's gorgeous. A lot of stuff is playable on this machine. All right, I'll trim this out. We'll be back in a minute. And we're back with the results. 42,595 points in Ice Storm Extreme. That's a crazy score, but it's a relatively simple benchmark by 2016 standards. So I've shown you an entire spectrum of tests. Wait, there's going to be one more. Now, all the results I've shown you down uh, here so far will be in the video description below. I have been asked in multiple videos by multiple people, what performance hit do the various computers I test have by having three monitors running? We've got the one on the laptop, we've got the one you're seeing here, and then I've got another monitor behind here that I'm watching so I can see what's going on. Great question, and I wanna show you that it's not much. Now, 42,595 was the result on all three screens. Let me come up to benchmarks. Let me come back down to Ice Storm Extreme, put my mouse over run. Let me unplug the monitors. Now, we're only running on the built-in screen. The external monitors are not plugged in. And Hopefully the mouse didn't move. I might have to come around and look. Yeah, it did a little bit, hang on. There we go. Let's see how well this runs without the external monitors plugged in. And so I'll just cut back in here so you can see it running. We in fact do not have our HDMI cable plugged in. Nothing else is connected. We are running totally on just the built-in monitor. So it was 42,595 points when I had all three monitors plugged in. Let's see what the result is when they're all disconnected. We'll be back in a second with those results. And we're back. 42,614 versus 42,595. That is within, well within the margin of error. I could run this five more times and possibly get a slightly different number each time just 
because that's the way it is. Um, it's the same speed. I'm doing this because I want you to see that plugging in the external monitors, if they are displaying the same image that is on the internal panel, does not affect your performance. Because it only renders the image once, and then it clones it. And just copying the image and sending it to, to two different outputs doesn't affect the performance. So I hope that was helpful and at least interesting to some of you who have been asking, does using all these monitors make a difference? No, it really doesn't. Now, if you game and you want to plug in an external monitor and the images are different, for example, maybe you want to game on a big monitor and have this monitor display your uh, web browsing or watch a movie, Netflix, or maybe you want to do online chat while you're playing, there will be a small performance hit. But if you're only gaming on one monitor and the other one is running a web browser, for example, it'll be a very minor performance hit. Nothing to get too excited about. Maybe a few percentage points at most, but all the real performance issues, uh, all the real performance strain is the game, not running a web browser. So, did you like this video? Click like. Did you not? That's okay too. Remember to subscribe to my channel. It's the big huge red button right down there. When you subscribe, which costs nothing, you will get updates to future videos, game performance reviews, unboxings, hardware reviews, and all sorts of fun stuff. So by all means, click that red button now. And if it's not red because you've already subscribed, thank you very much. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, those go in the comment section below the video. And as always, if you want to support my channel, if you like the videos I do, if you find this information helpful and useful, please use the links in the video description below. They will support this channel and help me keep making more wonderful videos. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.